Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello, and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy, and I am your host and guest today. So normally I do interview people, but this is going to be one of my pelvic floor chats. There is just me and you. And the idea of this chat is to break down a little bit of mystery, a little bit of um, just give you a bit of information about the pelvic floor in layman's terms, hopefully, so you can understand your body, help you to connect to your body and go from there. So this is video one in my pelvic floor series, and I'm going to try and explain it as well as possible because yes, I've got my pelvis with me to demonstrate, but some of you will be listening to this via audio only. So get your imagination goggles on and we'll try and see how we get on. So today's topic is base is a basic overview of what the pelvic floor is and what are the pelvic floor muscles. I'm not going to go too deep into it. As I said, it's just an overview. It's something that I wish I'd known when I kind of when I first started my fitness journey, I suppose. And when I first started becoming a personal trainer, I kind of wish I knew this about my clients. And I wish I knew this about myself as well. You don't know your own body. As a woman, I often felt like my body was just ganging up on me. So hopefully this will help just to get you in touch with your own body a little bit more. And I would love for you to subscribe to this please, whatever avenue you're listening to this or watching this on, please give me a review, give me a like, share it with people who you think might benefit, which is basically every woman in the world. So share away. Okay, so without further ado, what is the pelvic floor? So the pelvic floor is a collection of muscles that sit at the base of your pelvis. So if you're sitting on a chair or in your car and you could do a little bit of a wiggle, can you feel your sitting bones? So can you feel equal pressure on both sides of your bum cheeks? Hopefully that's a yes. Everyone's nodding. Yes, Amy. Yes, I can, I can feel that. Um, so those are your sitting bones. For those of you who are watching me on video, that is these bones here. Apologies, it is reversed and I'm getting a bit confused with my orientation. So these are your sitting bones. They're the bones on the outside of your hips, directly underneath the top of your hip bones where you think, I'm putting my hands on my hips, it's directly below there and that's what you sit on. Between there, well at the front, you've got your pubic bone. At the back, you've got your tailbone. If you slump back in your chair, you might be able to feel your tailbone. That's your tailbone. And between all of those is muscle. And there's different layers. If you can see here, there's an outer layer, there's an inner layer, and it goes deeper into connective tissue, tendons, ligaments, and fascia, and your organs. So if that wasn't there, all of the organs and the tendons and ligaments and fascia wouldn't have anything to rest on. There'd be a giant hole and all your insides would fall out. So that's basically what the pelvic floor muscles are, what they're for. And it makes perfect sense because there's a giant hole here because this, for women at least, this is the size of a baby's head. This is where we birth our children. So it needs to be big, but we need to have that support there for the rest of our lives for every other activity that we do. Right, I've got a list here because 
if you've listened to a podcast of mine before, you know I talk a little bit. So let's go down the list. So that's the first one. They support the organs. They stop everything from falling out. Next, as all muscles do, they should be able to contract and relax. So they are contracting. Again, if you see on my video, you've got the urethra, the vagina, and the anus. Well, the outside of the vagina, outside of the urethra, and your anus there. And there, the muscles around there and all of these muscles, they contract to stop you from wetting your pants or they stop you from pooing your pants and hopefully they stop you from farting all the time unless that's just a thing you like to do is let it all hang free and loose. But if you are a person who tries to hold your farts in, that's what those muscles do as well. They squeeze, they contract to keep everything inside because you don't want things falling out of your pelvis re pelvic region. But at the same time, they need to be able to relax for when you do need to go to the toilet. So there's no point if you're listening to this and you're thinking about your Kegels right now, there is no point in doing any squeeze and lift exercises while you're on the toilet because that is the time when the body's going, okay, I need to relax. I need to let things go. So the pelvic floor muscles relax to do that. They also um, contract during things like orgasm and they relax to help with penetrative sex or sexual activity, anything. Um, if you're inserting fingers or tampons or menstrual cups or you're having a pelvic exam, the muscles, ideally, if we're not too stressed, will relax and allow us to have that performed. So the sexual activity or the pelvic examination. Obviously, there is a lot, there is a lot more into that if you deal with vaginismus or vulvodynia or any, any kind of pain and feel like things are clamping. That is a whole other podcasts, so I'll go into that at a later date. But in an ideal world, it should be able to relax to allow for those things to happen. And on the very far end of that, I touched on it before, if a sexual activity results in a pregnancy, the pelvic floor needs to relax, it needs to open up. So here is the opening to the vagina. That needs, all of these muscles need to open up and they get pushed by the baby's head as it travels down the vagina and everything stretches. And so they need to be able to relax to be able to stretch to birth that baby. And so what is, what are symptoms if things aren't right? So what happens if things go wrong? Um, we'll start at the beginning. So the first one I mentioned was that the pelvic floor muscles support your internal organs. So, and I also mentioned that inside your pelvis, you have your organs, but you also, they're not just floating around willy nilly in a vacuum there is fascia and there's connective tissue and there's ligaments and tendons and all of that good stuff holding it all together and if there is any kind of weakness within that support structure not just the pelvic floor then there could be a lowering um, a heaviness a sagging or a descent so a lowering of those muscles and that could result in a prolapse and a prolapsed organ could be it could be my hands here represents the vaginal wall so my left hand is the back my right hand is the front my left hand here so this is the back wall of the vagina if you have a rectal prolapse which is where your bowel starts to descend and sink in. It can um, push into the wall of the vagina and then it could come in and start lowering and lowering and lowering and fall out of the vagina. So it is graded, prolapse is graded. 
and that is a rectal prolapse. You could have a bladder prolapse. So the back wall is fine, but the front wall is a bit weaker. The bladder is pushing on that wall. It's sinking lower and lower and it's got to go somewhere. The urethra and that hole is quite small. So odds are that it will fall into the vaginal wall, get lower and lower and lower and come out of the vagina. If those happen, you may notice issues with pooing. So it might be that poo is getting trapped. You're unable to go to the toilet as well. Same with going for a wee. It might be that blad, uh, the bladder is sitting into the vagina and it's, it's holding, it's pooling urine in there. And you might have to insert your fingers to push out forwards or backwards to help yourself. So if you're noticing anything like that, then you do need to see somebody about it. And I do recommend a pelvic floor physiotherapist or physical therapist if you're outside of New Zealand. And they can assess things and they can help you out. Other symptoms of a prolapse could be that you're having trouble with penetration. There just seems to be something in the way. Um, same with a tampon or a menstrual cup. You might have trouble inserting anything. You might just pop your fingers in and feel that something's not sitting right. It's falling in. It's just not, you can't find your cervix or your cervix could be lowering as well. There is a uterus, uterine prolapse where your womb descends and things like that can happen after um, hysterectomies. Um, also other symptoms of a prolapse could be a sensation of heaviness, dragging. What if you've got a noticeable bulge? You can see something poking out of your vagina if you do a self-exam, which I highly recommend. Self-exams are important. Then that isn't a normal thing and that's something that should be checked out. Okay. Next. So if things go wrong, as I said, so number two, they should, the muscles should be able to contract to stop you from just weeing or pooing as you walk around. If you are weeing or pooing as you walk around or when you cough or sneeze or jump or try and exercise, if you're doing any lifts and you're just farting to the hills or you're peeing your pants trying to do a lift or you're unable to hold on when you put the key in the door, for example, those are all signs of incontinence. That's a sign that the pelvic floor muscles aren't able to hold on. They're not able to contract properly. And again, that isn't a normal thing. It's a common thing. And it might be that you go, okay, it's something I have to put up with because I've had kids or because of X, Y, Z. And it's, it's not. It's not something you have to put up with. So if you do have any kind of incontinence, again, go and see a woman's health physio. And you can talk to me as well about that. I've got a directory on my website, which I'll pop in the show notes. Um, in the same vein, they should be able to relax to be able to go to the toilet, which is what I said before. If you are having trouble going to the toilet and you don't have ruled out a prolapse, so if you have trouble letting go and going for a wee, or you're getting any pain when you're going for a wee, or you're having trouble letting go when you need to go for a poo, that could be a sign that things are a bit too tight, as well as incontinence. You still might get incontinence with a pelvic floor that's too tight, which is why I recommend seeing a physio, because they can check things like that. And you need to then learn how to let go and relax the pelvic floor to be able to go to the toilet. So if you have trouble with constipation, that could be a sign of a dysfunctional pelvic floor. Um, I touched on vulvodynia and uh, vaginismus. So if you have any pain during sex, it could be related to a too tight pelvic floor. So if it can't relax, if you're having trouble relaxing, it could be because the pelvic floor muscles are too tight. It might be something else. It could be something underlying. It could be linked to trauma. It could be linked to um, inflammation. It could be linked to anything. And I say trauma, physical or mental trauma. It doesn't matter. 
And I do definitely recommend seeing somebody about that. You don't have to put up with it. You don't have to just go have a glass of wine and relax, quote unquote. Go and see somebody about it. And I can recommend some people for that as well. Um, and then uh, the last one. So yes, I mentioned before the pelvic floor needs to be able to relax to give birth. And I know a lot of people worry about making sure their pelvic floor muscles are strong enough and making sure that you don't have incontinence. I mean, when you're pregnant, you're going to have a, a person, at least one person, pushing and punching your bladder. And you're probably going to need to go for a wee a bit more often. And you're going to think you want to be able to strengthen those pelvic floor muscles. but Ideally, in an ideal world, your pelvic floor muscles need to be able to relax and contract. And during pregnancy, what I teach my clients anyway, is that it's good to be able to connect to the pelvic floor, hence my name, Connect. So connecting to the pelvic floor, getting the brain and body connected so you can feel it and you can feel that lift, but visualizing the relax as well getting ready, going through movements and helping just prepare the channel for the baby to travel through. And that is all of those. So that's kind of a crash course in what the pelvic floor is and what it does. It is also linked so the pelvic floor doesn't float around in isolation. It is also linked through to your hips and your legs and your back and your core which I will touch on at a later date. This was just a crash course in the pelvic floor muscles themselves. But if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I offer a free 30 minute call where I can just have a chat with you and I can point you in the right direction and we'll go from there. So don't ever worry if you if any of these resonated with you, if you think, oh yeah, tick, 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 that's me, you're not alone. You're not alone. So one in three women do suffer from some kind of pelvic floor dysfunction. And there are people like me who can help you. So get in touch. I'll pop all the links in the show notes. And please, as I said before, share this with any woman who you think might benefit, which as I said before, is every woman. And I would love for you to give me a five star review on my channel, whichever channel you've watched this on, and let's spread the words. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.